You're listening to the Bumbling Golfer Podcast, presented to you by Acorn Hills Clothing Company, the official clothing choice of the Bumbling Golfer. Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is John from the Bumbling Golfer Podcast, episode number 12. Um, Just a quick little blur before I get going. Make sure you go check out acornhillsco.com. Uh, if you're watching this video, I'm, I'm wearing one of their shirts right now. Uh, go check them out. Uh, great company, sustainable company, uh, really interesting story around it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so go check them out. Acornhillsco.com, uh, use the code bumble 15 that's bumble one five at checkout to get 15% off your entire order and you're going to love it. Super comfortable. So anyway, um, yeah, episode 12. I want to talk about something that I actually, it's just like an experience that I just had. And, um, I think it's an experience that we all have. Mine was a little bit different, which is okay. It's not a huge deal. It's not something I'm, I'm not upset about it. I was not going to lie. I was a little hot about it at the moment, but I want to talk about playing golf and the role that a ranger plays on the golf course. Now I'm not a ranger. I've never worked at a golf course, but I've been playing golf for a long time. One of the challenges that I have is when, now mind you, I don't think I'm a slow golfer in any aspects. I can play around the golf by myself with or without a cart, to, you know, under three hours, we'll say. Uh, if I have a cart, I could probably play around the golf in just about two hours. If there's no one in front of me, I've done it in the winter time. It's not a big deal. But pace of play to me is important. I'm not, I don't want to get any of this twisted at all. Pace of play is extremely important to me. The problem I have with pace of play, especially around when you're playing golf and you just see golfers backed up on holes left and right. Okay. It happens here, Southeast, Southeastern Pennsylvania, and even in New Jersey. Um, there always seems to be really tight tee times, whether it's 10 minutes or eight minutes or whatever, nothing very long. So I was playing golf this past weekend. Um, and yes, I was out there. I was filming. I had my setup. I was, you know, good to go. By the way, I shot a 79. I was hitting fairways. And as I've mentioned in past podcasts, and even on my, on my YouTube videos that I have, I will... I'll put the camera away. I'll shut it off. If I feel as though, or the people I'm playing with tell me, you know, within reason that it's making them uncomfortable or whatever, you know, I'll turn it off. It's not really that big of a deal. And by the way, I edit everyone's faces out to the greatest extent possible. So I'm playing golf and I'm filming. And as I'm playing, I think, I think I shot, so I shot a 79, which is eight over. I believe I was four over on the front, probably four over on the back, something like that. But I was playing really well. And I was playing with a group that was very fast. Like we were playing, we were moving along really, really quickly. Now we were all playing great golf. Um, I think the group kind of stood out. I think there was, an, I think there was another 79, maybe an 80. Um, but we continued the, the pace of play. Now, before I got out on the course, I I went into the pro shop and I checked in. Amazingly nice guy in there. Amazingly nice. Just super accommodating, happy. I said to him, look, if you hear any complaints about someone out on the course filming and holding things up, just let me know. I will stop back in after nine holes. He said, you know what? It's no problem. The pace here is pretty good. I think we're in good shape. I said, okay. I said, if I feel as though I'm slowing people down, if there are people hitting up on us and we're not waiting, I will definitely put it away, which I do all the time anyway. Now I get out to the starter and I have my camera set up and I'm just kind of doing a little bit of like kind of B-roll ish kind of video. Um, Cause I want to showcase this golf course. I really, it was super interesting. It was laid out really well, at least from what I saw on uh, 18 birdies, by the way, shout out 18 birdies. Um, 
not sponsored, but I use their product and my coach uses it as well. And he can coach me whenever, um, just a cool feature. So then again, I get out and it's raining a little bit. It's not super busy. And I, I went to, um, I hit a little bit. They have, it's not a range, but it's like you hit into a net and then they have a really nice putting green. I was super excited to play this course because I love courses that are like in the woods and, and from what I saw, like on pictures and overlooking, you know, on Google maps. Cause I'm one of them guys. I like to look to know where I'm going. It looked really cool to me. And I said to the starter, I said, Hey man, look, I'm going to be filming out there. I will be back after nine holes. And if you hear complaints, you let me know and I'll put it away. He said, we're happy that you're here and we're happy that you're filming. I said, man, I really appreciate that. So we went on our way, uh, by the way, hit a bunch of fairways, hit a bunch of greens, played really well. Um, YouTube video will be out soon. Um, and if, depending on when you're listening to this, go check out my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate it. You don't have to like and subscribe and all that stuff, but maybe just go check a video out. And if you like it, maybe you can like and subscribe. So we get out on the course. Everyone's playing really well. Go down, you know, do our thing. I think we get through six holes, seven holes, something like that. No, actually, I think we got through, we got through nine holes. So in the ninth hole, I can't remember. Anyway, we were on a hole and I saw the ranger kind of, you know, sitting off to the side. And you can tell there was a ranger because there was, I think there was a trash can on the back. There was a red flag on the cart as well. Again, typical, you know, no big deal. But when I have the camera out, and I've said this before, there's been times when I've had the camera out and people make assumptions. Now, I'm not saying that I don't want them to do their job. What I'm saying is understand the situation, right? I have played with people that are ungodly slow, ungodly slow. And it's really not a problem because maybe they have a, set, a certain setup. Maybe they're older. Maybe they're younger. Maybe they've never played before. And I really like to be inclusive with golf. I, I don't see why anyone should ever have to worry or panic about playing golf, right? And I'm not going to say, oh, I paid my dues or whatever. Leave me alone. Um, I, I know that the, it's a business. I get that. So anyway, we get through however many holes that is. And the ranger said, Hey, you know, there's, you know, take a look at the time on your cart. Okay. No, no big deal. Um, they had new carts. I think we were like 17 minutes behind at the time, maybe 15. However, I believe it was hole number four or five. We let a gentleman go through who was a single and he was in a cart and he was playing very fast. Every group behind us, let him go. So we get to the ninth hole. We finish out and we drive over to the clubhouse. I needed to use the restroom. Some of the people in my group wanted to grab drinks and maybe some food or whatever. So we get there and the group in front of us, their carts were at the, um, they were at the turn right there. And for those of you who understand golf, they were at the turn. So, uh, as I was heading into the restroom, um, I was talking to the group in front of us and I said, Hey, are you guys going to number 10? And they're like, yeah, 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 you know, we're, we're doing it. And I was like, Oh, did you let a guy go through? Yep. We let a guy go through. That's the right thing to do. Absolutely. hundred percent. And you know, it, it was like, it was like a question like, Hey, were you told to speed it up? And he said, yeah, we were told that we're, you know, we're behind schedule and these guys are just having a good time, you know? So as they walked out, they're like, look, they're like, you're right on us. It doesn't look like you group behind us. So like you kind of had that conversation as a golfer. So the ranger comes up to me and says, Hey man, look, I don't mind if you're filming, but you guys are really holding the entire course up. And I looked at him. I was like, no, I said, we're, we're not. I said the, the guys who were, who were teeing off in front of us, they literally just left and they're going to number 10. He said, no, the guys behind you said you've been holding them up all day long. I said, that's interesting because no one's hit up on us at all. Not even close to it. And we would tee off and they would be on the green. And then we would tee off and we'd be in the fairway. And then they would be teeing off right behind us. So in that instance, the ranger points to 
a hole and says, these guys right here. And I said, these, it, by the way, the group behind us was still on the putting green after we were already starting to move along. Number nine. He pointed at the at the number one tee box. And he said, yeah, those guys right there. And I said, well, that's number one tee box. They're, they're not behind us. And he told us we were holding holding up the course and whatnot. And, and again, I know he's doing his job. But I felt as though at the time he was a little bit uninformed or, or ill-informed. I don't know how you say it. He was very respectful. I was very respectful back. Matter of fact, I have it on video. I didn't even know I was recording, but I recorded it. And it got it got me a little hot. And it got me hot for the wrong reasons. Because there were groups out there that were clearly much slower. But you can't make a slow group go faster. And sometimes, on certain occasions, if a ranger presses a group, it ends up slowing them down anyway. Because then they feel rushed. And they feel like they have to hit a shot and they have to do this. And they, and, and sometimes that can slow it down. The conversation wasn't anything that was related to what it is that we were doing as either as a group or anything. So I said, okay, I was like, we're not slowing anyone down. And I, I said, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. I said, if you see a problem with it, you come let me know. So we go to number nine and the Ranger follows us, followed us to number nine. I hit a drive right down the middle second shot or i'm sorry number 10 so after no yeah after the the halfway point get to number 10 smoke a drive down the middle now mind you smoking a drive for me is like 250 260 yards and it's a par five i proceed to hit my seven wood into the trees found the ball i had to punch out to the fairway so that was my third shot Hit my fourth shot about 10 feet from the pin two putted for a six moving on Again, I was not holding anyone up. I hit, and I get in the cart, and I go. The group in front of us, we had to wait for them to get off the green in order for us to hit our ball up. We get to number 11, and we tee off. I hit a ball a little bit left, still in play, and the ranger was sitting there waiting for us at the green. So at that time, I put the, I put the camera away, um, and the pace was the same. The pace was exactly the same. Now I do feel, and and I'll I'll just I feel like the people that were in my group felt rushed, and I feel like they may have thought that I was the reason, right, for us playing slow, but we weren't playing slow. We were playing on pace, and when we looked at the time on the carts, it looked it just looked different, right? So we went out at the same time. Our cart said or my cart said we were on pace. Their cart said they were 17 minutes behind. Now they said that they just had gotten carts that were newer or whatever. Again, I'm not complaining about anything. I just, this is just an observation I have. And I consider myself a very responsible golfer in the fact where, yes, I like to film myself. I do. I'm not out there holding anyone up. I will outplay virtually anyone at any time walking or riding to uh, and, and filming I, and, and by the way, that course, I probably could have walked it faster than we were driving. So, and I would have had better club selection because there was a couple places that I had to get out of. So anyway, that's kind of the conversation that I've been having with myself for a few days. And as I'm editing this, editing this video, um, you know, I, I just, I, I watched the video a couple times, the exchange that I had with the, um, with the, with the, with the marshal or the ranger. Um, again, the course itself, I I'm definitely going back and playing it for sure. I really enjoyed it. I played well, everything you, you know, everything's in front of you. I imagine that, um, when the course grows in and there's leaves on trees, it's probably unbelievably beautiful. It was green. It rained pretty hard the week before and, and actually a few days before. And it drained really well. Um, it it kind of seemed like it was like it's built on sand, which I like those courses. But from a ranger perspective, and for, you know, I, I've I've had I don't want to say run-ins, but I've had conversations with rangers who they have a tough job. They have a really really tough job because they're out there trying to make sure that there's a there's a flow, right? 
that there's a flow of people and no one's standing around too long and whatnot. Now, when you have a course like the course that I played, there are trees, there are waste areas. There's a lot of bunkering, by the way, really, really well done. Um, and for April, I thought the course was outstanding. I think the greens were really good. Um, I think the tea boxes look like they were letting them grow a little bit, which again, it's April in, in the Southeastern PA, New Jersey area. Most courses are like that, but yeah, the, the Ranger thing, um, I mean, they get a bad rap. I'm not going to lie that I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm the easiest when it comes to that. It's like kind of like me coaching baseball and, and an umpire missing a call or me perceiving an umpire missing a call. I tend to get hot pretty quick. I did maintain my composure around the Ranger, maybe not around my group, <laughs> but definitely with the Ranger. I understand he's out there trying to do his job and he's trying to do the best he can and make sure that everyone has a great time. Just something it's, you know, a few days later and it's still kind of rubbing me a little bit. Um, not in a bad way. Just I figured I'd come on here and <laughs> I guess and talk about it, but I'm, I'm curious to see or, or, or hear what your experiences are with Rangers or with, um, you know, pace of play, right? So we can make this a pace of play conversation. I don't know exactly what that means to everyone, but I really do believe that I'm one of the more, um, uh, I, I think I'm more on the side of a speedy er golfer. Uh, I don't really, I, I kind of hit the ball and, and you can look at my videos if you like, again, shameless plug, but, um, I kind of hit the ball and I just get rolling. Like I almost don't wait for the ball to land. Uh, I'm trying to do that a little bit more recently so I can understand more about my golf shots. But yeah, just curious to see what everyone thinks and 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 what your perception is of a ranger because I don't get a good feeling when any ranger comes around. Even though I know I'm not doing anything wrong and I know that they're just doing their job, I just want to get to a point where when I go out and I have and, and I play golf, I have fun. And I've had to have conversations with people about the camera and they're like, well, you know, you're slowing up play. And I'm like, well, can you show me how I'm slowing up play? And they point to the camera and I'm like, watch me for one hole and you will never come back to me and tell me that I am the reason that the pace of play is bad. Now, if I'm playing terribly, I put the camera away anyway, because no one wants to see that garbage. Um, but also it's a distraction. Like if I'm playing bad, it's a distraction for me because I have to set it up. I have to make sure the view looks good, all those things. Um, but it's only where I'm at. I'm not setting it up for like panoramic shots or anything like that. I don't do that. I just set it up literally five feet behind me. I hit a shot. I pick it up and I go. Sometimes I don't even turn the camera off, which is what happened when I was talking with the Ranger. But it kind of rubbed me a little bit, right? I was playing good golf um, and it what it didn't bother me at all. I have a, a different mindset now this year for golf. And, and you know, those of you following my, my, uh, my journey to a single digit handicap. Um, I have a different perspective now. I have a different perspective on golf and how golf should be played and all those good things. But yeah, um, it's not an authority thing. I think it's a common sense thing. And I'm not saying that the Ranger didn't have common sense. I'm just talking about this specific event, but I've had, ru I again, run-ins. I've had conversations with Rangers or marshals on different courses um, about pace of play. And I've been in tournaments or, or like I ch say a tournament, like charity events where I have sat on, um, certain tee boxes for hours, like for an hour. And that is not ideal for me or for anyone else for that matter. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's my, that's my spiel. That's kind of what I wanted to talk about and yeah, pace of play. So we'll just call a pace of play. I gave you an example of what I, I, um, I had happened to me in my group. Uh, and by the way, we weren't singled out. It was everyone. I think the reason we were talked to was because of the camera and that's okay. I'm completely okay with that. I know that I risk that every single time I go out, uh, every single, um, every single foursome that we talked to, uh, they said they were told about pace of play. And sometimes I believe that is on the golf course. To be honest with you, if there's an eight minute difference between tee times, it's not enough. 
It's not enough. We don't have enough. There are not a good, good enough golfers, including myself, that can maintain an eight-minute separation. You just can't do it. You're going to hit a bad shot or two or four, depending on the hole, depending on the situation, depending on all of that. So at some point, we have to take a step back and recognize that regardless of what we do, how fast we play, there can be a time where it's not our fault. Maybe the course is stacking the tee sheet too closely. And here in southeastern Pennsylvania, that is a gigantic problem. We deal with that all the time. I mean, you can hit your first tee, to tee, ooh, you can hit your first tee shot and the starter saying, you better get moving because people are going to be right up your back. And that is the truth. And I understand that to a degree. And again, it's business. I want everyone to make money, right? I love playing golf. I don't want golf courses to close because they're not making money. Um, By the way, they're making money. I have to play later in the afternoon now, like 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock, because I am not going to pay the, the, the amount of money they're asking on a Saturday morning. That's for this week. But anyway, um, yeah, so anyway, thank you again for listening. Um, I like doing these kind of by myself. I do lo I love having guests on. So if you want to come on and you listen to this, you want to come on, hit me up. We'll we'll get it together. Um, it's uh it, it's a little hard sometimes to to get people scheduled. Um, but again, I I would rather play golf than talk about it. So you know, shame on me for having a podcast that I I I don't prioritize, but I prioritize myself and I prioritize my own fun. So anyway. Anyone wants to come on here, hit me up. Um, hit me up at the Bumbling Golfer uh, on on Instagram or Facebook, or you can reach out the Bumbling Golfer at gmail dot com. Uh, hit me up that way. Uh, but yeah, I really appreciate everyone listening. Shout out to the Golfer Gang Network again. Uh, it is growing. There are big things happening. Go check out Golfer Gang. Uh, I forget what the the e the website is now. I should probably know that, but I think it's Golfer Gang Network dot com. I could take a look at it now um, and I'll put it in the description as well. But um, yeah, episode number 12 done and in the books, I think I talked about having a tagline. Um, I'm a big back to the future fan. So those of you who know Biff Tannen, um, it's uh, one of them things like, you know, act like a tree and get out of here, but uh, go hit a ball into the trees. Not on purpose. I appreciate everyone uh, listening or watching whatever you're doing. Again, shout out to Acorn Hills. Go to acornhillsco.com. 15% off your entire order of amazing, amazing golf apparel and just casual wear. Sweatshirts, t-shirts, all that kind of stuff. Again, using Bumble 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order. Uh, shout out to the Scramble House and uh, the squad, the Scramble House community. Uh, continues to lift me up, continues to help me improve my game. Uh, I am on a mission to get to a single digit handicap, seven something, to be honest with you, with a stretch of a six something. Um, yeah, again, thank you everyone for listening. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Day or morning, whatever it is. Thank you for listening to the Bumbling Golfer Podcast. Be sure to check out Acorn Hills Clothing Company at acornhillsco.com. Be sure to use code BUMBLE15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order.